We're here with another teacher profile for you. We're with Rob Myers from the Del Paso Heights School District. He is their 2008 uh, Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, Rob. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let me, uh, let me ask you first quickly. Uh, tell me where you teach, uh, what subjects you teach. Okay. Um, I teach uh, in the Del Paso Heights School District. Um, I teach fifth and sixth grade <coughs> self-contained class. Um, my, for, for this year, my fifth graders are fourth graders that were with me last year. And my sixth graders are actually mostly kids that were with me in fourth grade the year before last. Wow, so you've really so, gotten to know your students. Yeah, so this year I only had about four kids who've never been in my class before. So it's been an awesome start to the year. We hit the ground running. <laughs> well, let me ask you first, what, it is, what does it mean to you to be chosen as a teacher of the year for your school district? Um, it's, it's quite an honor. Um, and it's pretty, it's humbling because, uh, and I was actually thinking about this, um, last week we had our first uh, in-service days or pre-service days. Um, and I was looking out over the, everybody else uh, that was gathered there in the cafeteria at the school for the, the district in-service. And uh, just looking around at how many people there were that I, I really respect and um, being chosen as kind of a, a representative of all of them is, is quite an honor for me. Well, how many years have you been teaching now? Um, this is my seventh year in Del Paso Heights, um, eighth year in the classroom, and then I taught two years in a science program before that. So what do you enjoy the most about teaching? Um, I kind of break it up into a few things. The, the biggest thing for me is just the minute-to-minute -minute experience of it. I, I, um, I love the, the, just the reward of being in the classroom and everything's buzzing and um, kids are excited about what they're doing and they're engaged in it. Um, I love that aspect of it. I really enjoy um, seeing the kids make progress throughout the year, um, seeing them maturing and becoming um, better people and developing in their character. Um, and then I also really enjoy, um, I have a lot of students that come back after they were in my class uh, and there's always kind of a flood uh, that happened last week. It, it's always the beginning of the year flood, the kids that come back from middle school from their first week of middle school and um, tell me all about you know, what it's like at Rio Tierra or what it's like at Leroy Green and, and that's really fun because it, it, that's a big payoff. So there are some real rewards for you there, aren't there? Yeah. Tell me about yeah. some of the others. What else do you really enjoy about that? Um, I, I love the community where I teach. Um, and I wasn't, I'm not from Sacramento, so it was all new to me when I got here. I had taught for a year in Long Beach before I came here. Um, so it was a whole new thing for me to be in Sacramento. Um, and to go from that to really being a part of a community that's really strong, um, knowing the kids really well. I know the families. Uh, now that I've been there long enough, I've got kid, multiple kids from the f same family, so I'll have siblings and cousins, and um, kids will come back to me, you know, in high school, and, oh, you've got my little brother, you've got my little sister, and be mean to them, or, <laughs> or teach them, you know, they do all, th all those sorts of things. So that's really fun. Um, and I, that's another big part for me. Um, I really love doing a lot of the experiential stuff too. I taught, I started teaching in an outdoor science school program um, and the focus of that was bringing kids into the outdoor environment and, and nature as a classroom. Um, and since then, uh, coming to Del Paso, I've um, brought kids to Yosemite every year and Marin Headlands every year and Sly Park every year in the Sierras. And so I really love bringing that experience to kids and seeing them in a whole new environment. Well, obviously, um, there are a lot of rewards when it comes to teaching. What do you find yeah. are, are some of the biggest challenges, not just for you, let's say, but say for teachers in general? Um, I, I kind of call this the, uh, the, the culture, cultural warrior challenge, I think, because our, our kids are faced with so many things out there. There's just a deluge of commercial um, things targeted towards them. Everybody's trying to sell them something, video games, music. Um, junk food, <laughs> there's just so many things that they're just inundated with. Um, and as a teacher, the, the, the things that people are using to sell them, those things are not necessarily, not necessarily the healthiest things. And so as a teacher, I have to offer them an alternative that's equally as appealing. Um, and that's probably the biggest challenge is to really make that sell. Um, the kids are in my classroom because they have to be. They're, they're minors and their parents are putting them there and the state's putting them there. It's compulsory education. 
Um, but I'm the one that has to make them want to be there and that has to make them want education and to see the value in it um, and to want that growth. So I, that's the biggest challenge, I think, and it's probably the most important, too. Now, are there special things that you do uh, to try to inspire your students or, or do, you have, do you do anything really specific within your classroom to, to engage your students? I do a lot. Um, I try to relate a lot of personal stories. Um, I was a kid that didn't like school. Um, I, I did fairly well up until late elementary school and after that I really didn't like it. Um, came from a blue collar family and none of my immediate family went to college. Um, I was sort of the first one to do any of that. And my kids know that. Um, they know that I really am happy about a lot of the rewards that I've gotten from that experience. Um, they know that school wasn't easy for me, and so I, I give them a lot of those stories. I talk to them honestly and openly and, and um, use a lot of those things to help them connect and motivate towards school and acad the academic world, because it sort of is a whole different culture for a lot of them. And how do they respond to your stories when you tell them about you know the challenges you faced in the classroom? Um, a lot of them can really relate, um, and I think they see me as a that sort of helps break down that teacher-student barrier, and they start seeing me as a real person. Um, and I'll, I show them pictures too. You know, I show them pictures of me on my bicycle when I was ten and stuff like that. Um, and I want to break down. I remember being a kid and thinking there were two different kinds of people. There were kids and there were adults. And there the two shall meet. <laughs> and uh, and I, I want my kids to see that it's really a, a, a process and um, that they can go anywhere that they want to. Um, they just need to you know, choose their path, set their goals, and, and concentrate on meeting those. How do you see education changing uh, in the future? I mean, obviously, just in the past several years, there have been changes. Yeah. Um, there's, I think, um, I mean, with, with standards coming into play. Um, I think California has really rigorous standards, um, which are great because they kind of in, ensure that, uh, or the, the focus is moving more towards ensuring that all kids um, get access towards all those standards and a, and a high expectation for their academic achievement. Um, and so I think kind of the, the challenge and the shift is, is really towards making sure that all kids get that. Um, and I teach in a, in a district that where a lot of my kids in the past may have slipped through some of the, the cracks. And I think we're, we're really focusing on tightening those cracks so that our kids don't slip through them. Um, and I know personally that's one of my big challenges because I think um, I was one of the kids that slipped through a lot of those cracks. I didn't, uh, I didn't finish high school. Um, I kind of leave that part out of my <laughs> story. So, so what did you do to, kids, to but, take care of that? Um, I, I went into a, a trade um, at a young age uh, that the rest of my family was in. Um, and I learned that trade and actually became a licensed contractor um, by the time I was 20. Um, and, I, and I realized I enjoyed that work, but there was something else that I wanted to do. Um, and so I put myself back in school and worked through school and, and this was the thing that I wanted to do. Um, and so that's, that's how I ended up here. Uh, now is there any one teacher you had in your past that, uh, that stands out in your mind as someone who inspired you? Yeah, I find myself talking a lot about how I was sort of the kid that kind of got left out a lot of the time or, or pulled myself out and nobody tried to pull me back in. Um, but actually there was one teacher, whenever I, I sort of talk with that, I guess, idea, I was thinking of one teacher, and um, it was my fifth grade teacher. It was Mrs. Rudloff. <laughs> the year was 1981. <laughs> um, I, she really made me. If I would, I think if I would have had enough more teachers like her, I probably would have stayed the course and not left education for quite a long time. She, well, briefly, what would you quickly say to someone to inspire them to be a teacher if they were thinking about it? Um, if they were thinking about it, um, I I would say that the rewards are just immense. Um, the, the rewards are, you're going to get everything out of it that you put into it. Um, so if, if you're looking for a career where you want to get a lot out of it um, and you also need to be ready to put a lot into it, um, teaching would definitely be the job for you. If you're going to get that, that personal satisfaction, those rewards of being part of a community, of being part of people's lives of um, making the difference. And I, I kind of talked a lot about this recently with some friends and colleagues and stuff, um, <clears throat> that we're, we're really the connection between 
or the shared experience of all Americans. Um, everybody comes from a different home. Everybody has parents who are, you know, differing abilities and availability. Um, but uh, elementary school, in particular, is really that common thread. It's that experience that we all share. Um, whether you know, I'm we're outside on the margins, barely existing, or we're thriving in our careers. We all went to elementary school, and that gives elementary school teachers a really unique position to be able to reach uh, everybody and to really um, level the playing field out there and, uh, and really contribute a lot towards society and equalizing things and, and leveling the playing field and um, what's open to people, what we can achieve. Okay, well, Rob Myers, the Teacher of the Year for the Del Paso Heights School District. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me.